Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number eight in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So we're uh, in our previous episode, we got through um, using the, the basic working versions of uh, the new and create actions on our controller. So we can see we've got new, we've got create. We've been doing this with a test-driven development approach. So we have um, tasks about should get new, should get create. Those are all passing, uh, but we do have a problem. If you go to articles new right now, articles mu, yeah, if you're a cat, and create the article, we now have, and we'll go back to articles, an empty article, like straight up, if we go to our Rails console. <laughs> Title, empty string, body, empty string. Uh, it's got a database ID and it's got created at and updated at attributes, but uh, that is a problem. You should not be able to just submit an empty article when you're doing this. So uh, in order to prevent certain things like that happening, you can add validations and um, you'll uh, have error messages for those. So um, this is what we're going to do in this section here. So as of yet, our model uh, is completely just class article inherits from application record and there's nothing custom in it yet at all just an empty um, um, Ruby class that's inheriting from its super classes and all that. So um, we're going to use the, the feature of Rails um, validations and these validates are um, uh, part of the kind of the Rails API, their um, kind of class um, methods here that we're, we're, we're um, we're calling and making part of the um, now the API of this uh, active record uh, article model. So in uh, the fashion that we've been doing this, we're going to, before we uh, make the modifications to the model itself, we're going to now uh, start go in our article test here. So right now we just have the um, test the truth commented out. We don't have any tests yet on this model, but the, the model is where you would want to test your validation. So we'll, we'll pause and we'll, we'll write some tests and then look at them. All right, so let's take a look at the test code that I've got in for this model. And you might be saying, hey, this is just a couple of attributes. This is, uh, this is overkill to test it this much, but uh, this is uh, uh, kind of, I'm intentionally doing a little bit more than you normally would just to kind of illustrate the types of things that you, uh, you test for in, um, in, in writing thorough tests. So, We've got the um, first, um, you, you, need, you want to do positive and negative tests. So you want to make sure your positive scenario doesn't uh, break here. Uh, in our setup, we have um, our instance variable article. We're getting that from articles nerd in our test fixtures here. So we have this article called nerd. It's coming from our um, um, our fixture and actually I'm going to new make sure that Our article is valid uh, and typically I will um, 
for the uh, the existing fixtures, I'll actually create a um, an item in my test helper to kind of uh, iterate through those and make sure that they're all valid. But uh, for at least now, we'll make sure that our um, existing um, article here is valid. And um, and so what we're doing is we're creating a new article with a uh, a, a, a title and a body that we've got from the setup area that is um, going to pass the validations that we've got in uh, that we're about to put in the Oracle model. Uh, we are asserting that it's valid, asserting that we're able to save it. In this case, uh, reloading it um, from the database, making sure that the uh, ID isn't nil and that the title and the body uh, match what we intend. Uh, and then here we're just making sure that our existing article in the uh, in the fixture is still valid. Um, the and then now we've got um, the unhappy path for each of these uh, validations that we've got. So we can see here validates title, presence is true, validates body, presence is true, length is greater than uh, uh, minimum is at least ten. So We've got the, um, in each of these cases, we want to make sure that our, um, a new article, if it is going to fail that validation, uh, so we've got a, a, an article with a body and no title, we should um, have it uh, be invalid when we try to validate it. And then um, in the uh, full messages of the error, it should have title can't be blank. Um, and the same thing for an existing article. So if you take the, one of the attributes, in this case, make it nil, then it should not be valid and it should include the, um, the, the error message about the title being blank. Uh, same deal with the body now. And I um, just changed the, uh, the, the, the source of blankness to, from nil to an empty string here. Uh, and then we're asserting that's not valid and that the uh, the messages include that the body is blank. In uh, the case where the body is blank, you're actually going to have the two error messages. So you'll have body is blank, can't be blank, and body uh, needs to be at least 10 characters long. And now uh, we have a test, particularly on the, uh, the body being too short. So we've, we're assigning this too short string here, and then um, we're um, trying to validate the um, the article it's going to fail and with our body is too short minimum 10 characters um, there and then uh, same thing with an existing article and they should all fail they're not going to fail yet because we don't have any validation so the hopefully at least the pa the happy path will pass so we'll get out of the console here And for now, I'm going to only run this on the model. So we can see we've got nine assertions, uh, three failures. So expected true to be nil or false uh, in all of these um, tests about the validation. So we will add in now to the article model. The validations that we had in here. So we'll start with just the title. And we should be down to two failures. We've got more more assertions. So the way that in any one of those test blocks, the first assertion that it meets a failure with, it will um, it'll kind of fail fast on that. The the remaining um, assertions in that block will not be um, will not be, be uh, attempted. So uh, e each time we're doing this, 
make things pass, we're going to get farther down into that list of assertions. So next thing we're going to do is add presence true to the body. And that should get us down to one failure. just now failing on 56. So if we look at our failure, line 56, assert not article valid. Right now it is valid with too short. We will go in and add the second um, validation there about the length. And rerun our test. And now we're back to ta passing, and our all of our tests in the suite are now passing, so we didn't break anything in the articles controller test. But we do want to um, also modify the articles controller test to uh, account for the situation where um, it, it should be displaying um, error messages if you don't have valid um, um, data being passed by that form. So right now we've got this um, go to the articles controller, if article save, uh, redirect to the article and it was created and this else um, new, render new status unprocessable, unprocessable entity, we're not uh, covering that right now in our tests. And so we go and look at the um, validations section here. Um, so we've added uh, validates the title, the presence is true, and then validates the body, presence is true, length uh, minimum 10. You can put a minimum and a maximum on that length, and there are other um, validations that you can use. I believe there is a um, it, in the, the active record basics, it g gets into that. Um, well, at the end of, after we get through this guide, we'll, we'll kind of look through some of the other Rails guides that are available to you if you want to continue your, uh, your learning on this. So the um, noted here, uh, title must be present um, and it must contain at least one non -sp white space character. Uh, is how Rails does that. Uh, and then the body must be present and the length of that body must be at least 10 characters long. And um, note here, so the title and body attributes, um, when we're, um, for every table column, we automatically get those attributes uh, as part of inheriting from active record base and application record in each of our models. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is modify the um, articles new to display any error messages. And you can see here there's, there's one, um, you can either if you wanted to um, display them in um, at the top, you can do that, or in this case, we're doing it in line. So um, we'll add this code underneath. Uh, we need the end block there. So what this is doing is taking your article, errors, uh, full messages for, so in our um, in our article test there, uh, we were just doing full messages that it include included those things. So, um, but you can do it for a, a specific attribute there, and then it will take uh, that. You can see it's a this is a Ruby symbol, so um, we haven't really talked about about this. We've just kind of been um, 
um, using them without talking about them. So uh, Ruby symbol here uh, starts with a colon and it's string like um, it kind of alphanumeric characters and underscores. Um, but you've got that uh, and then it's uh, this dot each is a um, uh, Ruby enumerable. Um, so any collection, uh, think arrays, hashes, sets, um, anything like that um, can inherit from enumerable and have an each method. So it's um, going to loop through each of those full messages, just like we did with our, um, we look in our index.html.erb, we use the same method here. So articles.each, and then it's going to, um, we've got that Ruby do end block, and each of those articles will assign it the, um, the block variable article, and then we are able to do something like link to article. So we're going to do the same thing in each of these um, portions of the error messages. in our new.html.erb. Make sure I get it nested correctly so it is in the div. And then in our body will do the same thing again but this is full messages for body take that and put that there actually we'll undo that for a moment and write a failing test in the um, in the articles controller to cover it so um, articles controller test we're going to have um, should display errors if um, data is invalid. So I'm going to um, pause and uh, write that test and we'll talk through it. All right, so we've got our, our new test here. So I went in and similar to the article um, dot RB um, in the setup section, title blank, body blank, body short. And um, so in this case, we're doing article.count and our title and our body are both going to be blank here. So um, we should assert, instead of asserting the difference, we should assert no difference uh, to article.count. Um, we're asserting um, that new article is still being um, displayed there, that it has a form, and then uh, there are three uh, kind of form div div tags um, uh, the first uh, one in the title and two in the body. So um, with, with the particular um, error messages that we expect. So we will run these and they'll fail. So form div div expected three found four. because we should only have three in that case. Let's see what happens when we do this in the application. a 
look at the item here, form div div. So it's rendering new, but why are we getting four when there should be zero? Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Did I not got it saved with this section? It should be zero. Okay, well, let's. that out temporarily and see maybe I've got the inheritance wrong or Maybe I'm just being too specific here. And if I were doing this, my not going through the guide, I would give these things uh, at least IDs or classes so that we could um, better identify them and we'd want to style them as well. So, uh, but. In fact, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. If we go to our articles controller, we will, our articles, new.html.erb. Let's make this equals error. back in our articles controller test now. Should be three div.errors and then each one of these should also be div dot error uh, go back and temporarily undo that get our failing test expected three found zero now we'll go back in and we're back to passing. So if we go in now and try that blank article again, we can see title can't be blank. Body, that's interesting. Oh, that's just the normal, that's the label for the body. That's not an error. Um, so yeah, that the styling obviously could, uh, could be improved, but that is giving us what we want. We'll take a look at the rest of this section.
So uh, the guide talks about the full messages for, returns uh, an array of user-friendly error messages, which we've just displayed. And then we've got the new and create controller actions. So if the um, article saves, which means it has to be valid, uh, it will redirect to the um, to the article. Otherwise, it will render the new item again. And you can see, um, I'll do one that do this. You can see that it preserves the input that we had. So that the, um, if we like redirected to new and had um, information about the errors in the flash or something like that, you would lose the uh, everything you did in the form, which would be an extremely frustrating user experience. So instead, um, the the else there re-renders the form and then adds back adds in the the error messages to help you so that you can uh, successfully complete the form and and create an article. And the um, active record validations looks like it has its own uh, its own guide. So uh, active record validations, uh, validation error messages. There's a section in that uh, working with validation errors. Uh, so the last thing we have here is uh, we can note that right now, whenever I'm in the index area, in order to get to the um, the new article path. I'm having to write this uh, URL kind of manually in the browser, which is not a good user experience. So in the uh, the article section here, we're going to add after underneath the uh, the unordered list with our articles a link to the uh, the new article path so that we can do that. And in our controller test, Extra assertion about that if I go back in and comment that out it'll fail so now we've got that link to new article new articles path our full suite of tests is passing. We have completed the 7.3 section finishing up, and we can now, uh, in our next, we'll commit, review and commit the code, and then we'll pick up editing and updating in the next video, in which will um, be, um, you'll see, very similar to what we were doing in uh, create a new and we'll wind up um, making our first use of, of Rails partials in order to um, not repeat common code between the two. So we go to our status. Uh, nothing new in this, uh, just modifying stuff that's already there. So we add the val validations to our model. We added the link to the new article in index. We added um, displays of the error messages to the uh, to the new view in the form, and then we added um, uh, information about the um, 
error messages and uh, some additional assertions for the unhappy path in articles controller. And then we uh, fleshed out and removed the comment to test the truth and added tests for our article validations. Pause and write the commit message. So we've got our commit message. Save it. Make sure that we didn't have anything unsaved. We don't. Push to the remote and we'll edit an update in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end to end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.